So, I've been going over some stuff with cyanotypes here recently, and I noticed this is one I did fairly recently. This was done on my enlarger that I put the um, 100 watt UV LED in, and this is on like 11 by 14 paper. So this isn't quite 8x10, and that took a few hours. And then I got to thinking, I found some stuff I did a few years back. And it, don't get me wrong, the detail in this is beautiful. This is from a 35mm negative, so it's this is one of the best cyanotypes I've ever done with an enlarger. But I found these upstairs where I had stashed some stuff. These are huge. I guess I didn't realize just how big I had made these. This is, oh, I can't remember the size of it. Um, hold on one second. <clears throat> this is 18 by 24 inch which I apparently at the time didn't realize just how big that was for an enlargement. This is from a 35 millimeter negative. Now the detail is kind of crappy, but um, I guess at the time I didn't realize this because I was just getting into all of this. The detail isn't crappy because of the process. It's crappy because this is a 35 millimeter negative blown up this big. You just can't blow it up, even fine grain, you can't blow it up this size and get a lot of detail. But here's the more interesting part of this. These big prints weren't made with that enlarger, they were made with this. This little modified projector, which only has a 10 watt bulb in it. Now these took about 24 hours of exposure time, but I've been reading about people who've been making smaller prints and taking even longer than that. So I got to thinking, well, what is it? How was I able to do this with that crappy little projector and get these massive prints, which in retrospect, the detail isn't too bad for a 35 millimeter negative. Well, I was sitting down the other day and I'm thinking about it and I figured out a couple of things that we're going to go over today. Um, this is my favorite paper and it was because I used it for enlargements and I didn't know why at the time. Well, it turns out it's because this paper, at least I'm determining that, I think that's what it is, it's slightly acidic, not extremely, but slightly. So what I'm going to do is run a series of tests with paper, this paper that is slightly acidic, some neutral paper that is uh, got nothing in it, it's a neutral pH, and then some paper that is, or I'm just going to coat a couple sheets of paper that is um, alkaline or basic just to show you why it doesn't work right. Um, the other thing I did do some tests on, and I don't have them here, that's why I'm going to have to redo them, is I did do some experiments where I reduced exposure time with heat. Uh, I didn't think it was that significant at the time, but apparently that's just some stuff we're going to try, you know, try out and see what happens. Um, now I don't mean heat is in fire. Uh, <laughs> I mean heat as in we're going to use some heat lamps to heat the paper as it's being exposed to see what happens. But we'll get right into paper and then go from there. So the first thing we got to talk about is paper. Um, and I have an assortment of papers here that I've purchased. Some of it I'm using for carbon printing stuff, but um, any of these will work with cyanotypes. Um, there are three main reasons I think that certain papers take less time to expose. Well, one main reason. Cyanotypes are extremely sensitive to pH. So this 
is completely neutral. This should have no, it shouldn't have any effect whatsoever. I mean, this should be the best type of paper you use. However, it's not my favorite. It's pH neutral. You know, it's not acidic. It's not um, basic. Uh, this, which we'll coat to show you, I'm going to coat some of this and some of this for you to see the difference. This is cardstock for a copy machine. It is basic, and you'll see why that is a problem. This is my all-time favorite for cyanotypes. It works great. I've had great success with it, and you can get it in I mean, you can get it up to very large uh, sheets, which is what I like about it. So this is the type of paper. This is primarily the type of paper we'll be using, but we are going to coat some of this and some of this just so we can see the difference in, you know, exposure times in them. So first we're going to go over mixing the solutions. Um, you can just purchase this. Uh, well, any photography store generally has this stuff. Um, I I kept the bottles. This is not the original solution. I buy the chemicals in bulk and just mix it up to replenish it. Um, so I use two foam brushes, a small one and a large one, and you'll see why here in a minute. But as far as mixing it, because it sits for a while, I get mold in the... Um, Solution B, which is the ammonia citrate. I'm probably mixing way more than we need, making 100 milliliters, but I need to use some of this up. So, 50 milliliters of A, 50 milliliters of B. This time we don't have any mold, so, oh well. Either way. So, mix A with B. Kind of mix it up. And then um, mix it up really well. But then what I do before I coat, because if it gets some of that mold in it, it's, it messes with brushing. It'll smear the brushing. So, I go ahead and filter it just to make sure there's nothing in there. This actually looks clear. I could have probably skipped this step, but just for making sure everything's good, we'll filter it, and um, then now we'll get on to coating it. Now, there is a basic technique to coating paper, um, especially paper that has a slight acidity, and the reason for that is... Um, the if you have any like it, it kind of soaks into the paper and it has an initial drying where it's not like really wet if any of it is too thick and it beads it just turns blue it's too it has something to do with moisture and acid if it if it's got too much moisture on it it'll turn on you but so this is why i coat this way so i only do one coat and it doesn't take a ton of solution, but you want to get the entire paper coated, brushing two directions. But then um, when it comes to this paper, you'll see it buckle a little bit. Now, you probably can't see on camera, but there's some, um, it kind of runs. So what you do is you take the wide brush, the one that you haven't soaked in solution, and you keep brushing that in until you get all that off of there. So if it's really, really wet, like if it's getting to the point where there's some smearing off, you can take another piece of paper that you're getting ready to coat and then brush it onto that so you don't waste any although I just made way too much we're gonna waste a bunch of it but I'm gonna coat several sheets so 
So yes, the big brush is to kind of help pull off the excess, which I don't know if that's so much a problem for any other kind of paper, but I definitely have to do it for this. So that's how I'm coating it. Um, I'm not going to show me coat all of it, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and get these coated and then we'll see. We'll hang them up to dry. Okay, so our paper's hanging up to dry. Um, let me see real well. I have the dot lights dim so we don't overdo it. I've got uh, acidified paper here, neutral paper here, and then our one little uh, basic or alkaline papers there. So we're going to let these dry and then just for the heck of it we're going to attempt this is a two foot by three foot sheet. Um, a couple things to note uh, acidified paper won't last that long once you do it. Probably You need to make sure it's dry, very dry, and then after that you have about a week or so and then it's no good because the acid will react with it. So it only works if you want to, it'll help speed up the process, but you need to use it within a certain amount of time. Um, the smoother papers like these, when you're coating them, don't spend too much time on it because I've noticed the more you're working with it, the more little pieces come off like Bristol pad or hot press. It seems like pieces start to, it starts to smear because little fibers come off. In this whole experiment we're going to do, not with the enlarger, but we're going to do with the little 35 millimeter projector. So we're going to do everything with that and that way we can, it's just a control test, so we'll use that. Okay, all of our paper should be dry enough now. Um, it's hard to see in this light, but this is the alkaline paper and uh, I'm not even going to try to expose it. The whole point was to kind of show you if you look alongside it it looks paler. It's because it's just reacting with it and it's not so it's not going to work. So you don't want to use any kind of paper that's alkaline. Um, but we'll go ahead and uh, set up our first test which is just to get our kind of a baseline exposure level. Okay, so I have a negative in my little projector. This has got the 10 watt LED in it. I picked one that was as fine a grain as I could find with plenty of detail. And then that is over here, focused on this target. And then I can use this to make sure my focus is as good as it's gonna get. And also, you wanna make sure that you're covering the paper. So all that's ready to go and we'll get a piece of paper and do our first exposure test. Okay so I've chosen this piece of paper and this is what I was talking about. Let me try to get it focused in here. This is what will happen if you um, if you don't get that gloppiness smoothed out. You'll have that kind of an issue and it'll leave a stain on it whenever you're doing it. So I'm going to put this paper up on the target and then we'll see if we can do a time lapse with this exposing. Okay, so the exposure took five hours, or hopefully that's enough for it. We'll see. It took a little longer than I thought it would, but this is just plain. Uh, this is the acidified paper, just developed in plain water, and then we'll finish it off with peroxide. See, this was a five-hour exposure, but it still looks a little... It probably could have gone a little more. I'm kind of surprised it took so long, but that might have something to do with the fractal basement is cold, which will be the next set of tests about heat. 
but we'll see about that here in a minute. So, this is five hours. It's okay. I'll put some peroxide on it and see if that brings it up anymore. A little bit. So it's it's not terrible, but it could have done with a little more exposure. So that's five hours exposure. We'll um, set it up again. I'm not going to do a time lapse on every single one of them, but I'm going to set it up again. The next one is going to be the non-acidified paper and see if that has any effect on the time. But we'll, I'm going to do the five hours. I'm not going to do any more just to see what happens. So I'm not going to show the... Um exposure and development of each one of these just because it's just going to take too much time and it's just repetitive um so these are all six hour exposures or the first two are six hour exposures so i for some reason i was thinking five um but i was checking my notes and they're six so this is a the first one is the canson paper which i assume is slightly acidified for six hours um and it's a little it's high very high contrast and it's missing some detail this next one is the rag paper the more premium paper um and it was the same thing it was six hours developed in water and some peroxide afterwards the same exact procedure it actually looks better i'm kind of surprised it looks it looks pretty good um then I did the same thing over again, but the this one here is four hour exposure Canson paper with uh, vinegar, undiluted white vinegar, um, and it looks a lot better. And this is knocking two hours off the exposure time. Uh, and this one here, this final one, is four hour exposure with the rag paper developed in. Uh, vinegar as well um, I'll have to say that the four hour rag paper in uh, vinegar is so far the best looking one at least to me so um, six hours of exposure without using the vinegar was okay it probably needed to be longer if you were going to just develop it in water and peroxide um, but four hours actually looks pretty good using just plain vinegar, undilute vinegar. I have to say that because I've noticed some, some, uh, things I've seen online say to dilute it, but this is undiluted. So, um, that's all of the initial tests. And then we'll get into the test, uh, using heat to try to reduce the exposure time even further. Okay, for this final experiment, we're going to play around with heat. Um, as you can see, I have the projector focused on the target, just for reference. Um, I'm going to turn the heat lamp on. Uh, it will have no effect on the paper. I have tested this, and it will not, um, it will not expose it, because it's just infrared heat. So, I have the heat lamp on and this is to see how heat will affect the speed of the print like moisture in the air will affect it somewhat um, acid will affect it but this is one thing you can use as well what I'm doing here is letting this heat up a little bit and just for reference 61 degrees is what it is away from the heat source on the same panel. And this is getting up to, let's see, it's bounced between 78 and 80. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to put my actual paper up here and run the exposure 
and see how long it takes relative to the other ones with a heat lamp pointed at it. Now you could heat it from behind. It doesn't have to be a heat lamp. The heat lamp is just the easiest thing I have. Again, I want to assure you that the lamp itself will not expose the paper. I've tested that by just pointing a lamp directly at paper and set it there for like two hours and developed the paper and there wasn't anything on it. So there's no way for that lamp to actually expose the paper. The only thing that will change it is the um, projector. So I'm going to put the paper up, expose it, and we're going to do two different tests, one without acid development, one with acid development, and we'll see just how quick we can get a exposure with heat added to the mixture. Okay, so the final test, uh, we exposed it with heat. Um, I did uh, two sample papers. Um, they were both the rag paper because that's all I had left at the time. Um, but the first one is a two-hour exposure. This one was just developed in plain water, and as you can see, it's very underdeveloped, um, which I kind of figured. But... Um, after that, I did another sheet of the same paper with a two-hour exposure and developed it in the vinegar, you know, acidified water, vinegar. Um, and it actually looks pretty good. So, using heat and using acid, you know, vinegar, but it's acid, uh, we went from a six-hour exposure down to two hours it could have maybe went a little bit longer but that's still that's still a enormous decrease in exposure time now something else I want to point out here I used a relatively dense negative for this this was shot at box speed it was kind of a dark day so I was giving this test that one of the worst case scenarios you could as far as the amount of light that could go through it. So the amount of light going through this projector and negative was not going to be the most optimum. So this is the negative I used. It's it's fairly dense. I mean it was shot at box speed but it's still pretty dense. And uh, here is one that is shot kind of intentionally for cyanotypes. It's thin. Um, and we're going to do a test. I'm going to do a bonus video with a super large 2x4 two by, uh, two by um, cyanotype just to see the difference. But, you know, you're talking several times more light going through that thin negative. So, in theory, using heat and acid and a very thin negative you could possibly get exposure times down to 30 minutes um, I don't know if that's ideal or not but that is a possibility so if you want to reduce exposure time and you're using a projection system one use a thin negative or you know a less dense negative so more light will go through the most light you can get through the better uh, two, you can use heat to increase or decrease the exposure time. And three, you can use plain vinegar. That definitely is something to use, uh, and that will decrease the exposure time as well. So you can combine all three things and theoretically get pretty low exposure times, relatively speaking, with cyanotype solution on a projector. So... That's pretty much all I had for this video. Um, I want to do a bonus video where we're going to do a two by, it's either a two, it's a two by three or two by four foot piece of paper. Um, it's 24 by 36, I'm sorry, 24 by 36 inch piece of paper. And we're going to see how long it takes to expose that using the thinner negative and see what happens. So I will try out that video and I'll see you after. Uh, I'm not sure which what uh, what subject I'll do after that, but uh, I'll see you in the next one.